Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Oshinoko Season 2, Episode 2. Let's get this out of the way. The episode was very, very fun for me. Um, I also do have to point out that, as I've said this before, there's a big bias, bias on my end, since I do enjoy anything around the creative artsy industry, meaning photo, video, digital art and stuff like that, anything like that, I'm going to have a bias and generally, if it's well executed, I will like it. That being said, I'm not sure if this episode is going to be for everybody, for the sole reason that it was a little bit more on the slower pace. For those of you that wanted to see more Ruby Aqua action, not in that particular way, um, or maybe Aqua with Kana or Akane, um, more of like the, the love drama and stuff like that. There's not much of it here, unfortunately. This episode really revolves around talking and explaining a little bit of how the script writing goes for a play and the problems that can come across it. That also being said, I genuinely enjoyed it because to me this was super interesting i'm not sure to what extent this is accurate but it seems like it has it, it's it seems like it's it took inspiration or it definitely or the author definitely did some research as to how this works and and I feel like it was nice and properly explained about the issues that can come across if across uh across translating a manga work to let's say a movie or or a stage play and the difficulties and everything else you have to think about and what other problems can come across if there's issues between the writer who created the project the 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 manga the actual creator of the series in comparison to the person who just gets paid to compress things and make it washable for an audience which is different than when you're reading something so i found that super interesting but again a lot of explanation was going on in this episode uh not much of the drama that some people maybe would be looking for uh we had a little moment in the beginning of the episode with um with what was it with Aqua very visibly showing off how he did not care about theater and Akana getting super offended. Her and the other, another actress, I believe, was getting super offended by it. And then she's like, oh, we should like, we should like, uh, you know what? Uh, I have some time off. We should totally watch a, a theater play together then. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, uh, Kana, sorry, because her name escaped. Kana is looking from afar, and a fellow co-actor of her of hers is uh, also staring at at Aqua and Akane and being like, "Oh, like I forgot, like they were they were they hooked up. They're a couple." And she's like, "Oh, they're just doing this. You know, super gang, super jealous, adorable Kana. Uh, be super adorable about it. Be like, I'm like, oh, they're just being uh, they're just being a couple because they don't want to break up right after the show ended. So it will because it'll look bad. It'll be it'll get bad publicity and all that, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And I'm um, like, oh, I don't completely uh, agree that I feel like fiction and reality should be completely separated. Like basically giving arguments that." other people have given online as well to other shows and other series and other real life show events as well so given the author and the creator does an excellent job in just i'm not saying that that that's their opinion the way that kind of phrased it but it definitely shows a opinion from a group from a from a certain audience that has those opinions online and has verbalized them, which is another thing, and that is, um, I love how there's there's little jabs that get that get um, shown off. There's like not jabs. I think there's a word, the wrong phrasing, but I guess I love how the author is also showing uh, this demonstrating. I think as a better word that these type of people with these opinions also exist and you have to take those into account um 
Now the now Wakanda said didn't play a big role in the show in the, this episode at all. I'm just pointing that out that it's cool that the author went along with it. That sh this episode really was about the writing and the script writing of the play and how sometimes there is, there can be a conflict between the the creator of the series and also the writer who writes a script for the play or a movie and i thought that was very very cool very interesting to see and uh, portrayed because at first you could when you see the author, uh, she's like super cool, super nice, super shy, super mellow. But then she kind of snaps a little bit at at the at them and says, "I need this script completely rewritten. I will not sign off to this." And I love how the produ one of the producers is like, "It's way too late to do that. We can change one or two small things, but we can't rewrite the whole thing." And then she was like, basically saying. I don't care. I'll take my rights back if I have to. I'll decline myself. I'll separate myself from the project, and I will not approve this project if you if, if it's gonna come out this way. Because you have to understand as well from a creator, you have to understand that what you do, your the projects that you make, they're your babies. Unless you completely sell them and you have to accept that you have nothing to do with them, that's a different conversation. But if you still own them and you, and and you made them, they're still your babies. That you created them, you brought them out, you had a vision with them that you wanted the world to see or ever, somebody else to see or somebody to see. And when somebody rephrases your work or reproduces your work and it doesn't translate properly, it's almost like either they don't understand what you were trying to say, two, they weren't paying attention maybe, or three, they don't care, but they just want to use your popularity and they just want to kind of bank on it and make something out of whatever the hell they want to make out of it. So from a creator, I understand the frustration that comes with that. Um, funny enough, this episode is called Game of Telephone as well, which is the other example I wanted to give you. It's almost like visualize trying to uh, write, write a poem to somebody that you care about and then uh, you ask your friend can you tell her I wrote this poem and tell her this tell her I wrote it this way and then he goes and tells her like oh he made a poem uh, Rosa, uh, Rosa Red uh, Liza Blue and whatever the fuck uh, but he basically likes you he just says that to her You'd be upset because your feelings and the first of all the creation that you made completely botched. It's thrown out the window. Second of all, the message you were trying to portray and the sentiments that you had and the feelings you had that were trying to portray to that person are not prop being properly delivered. And a, this episode goes out of its way to show that the author is not a complete a-hole about it she's not it's not like she she it, they did a really interesting thing and i love that they did this they did a very interesting thing to show how it wasn't just like i read the script once i didn't like it let's do it again apparently there was a back and forth going on multiple times and the reason why she snapped here is because multiple revisions multiple uh request to change things and still not getting it right she's gonna she got frustrated and said maybe the script writer that we hired is not the right one for this play but i will not let this I, she even said like i'll rewrite it myself and the and the, and the writer can keep all the credits i don't care i'll cancel this just play if i have to and I know I have to pay a fine for it, but I don't mind paying the fine. I'd rather do that than, than have a work come out that's supposed to represent something I made and that has the wrong message. That's not That doesn't portray the message that I wanted to portray. And I'm glad that they, again, like I said earlier, I'm glad that it is showcased that it wasn't just uh, from one day to another thing. It was very clearly uh, uh, consequential uh, stagnation of different 
uh, different multiple occasions that she tried to get it fixed and it didn't work. Um, and the whole game of telephone thing, I think the game of telephone title, it's based on the one little sequence in the show where you see her asking to change this, this, and this, and then it has to go through one person, and that person is like, yeah, but we got to think about the production and uh, uh, expense and this, so um, they really want you to change this and this and this, and it gives it on to another person, and the other person reads it and is like, okay, but the actors have been already uh, like acting this amount of time, and then we have to reschedule uh, some of these things. Okay, can you try just changing this up to the next person? And it has to go through four or five different people, before it actually uh, it actually gets to her uh, um, before it actually gets to her and um, gets to the scriptwriter sorry the scriptwriter and then the scriptwriter still re misinterprets something um, so it was uh, that was very cool. And, and towards the end, I guess she just gets super frustrated and just does not want him to write the, the script for the play. And then you also see the, the downside of making comments like that and going with a decision like that because the script writer puts time in it, sometimes loses sleep over it to try and write the script as best as he, he possibly can with the resources that he has. But it's just uh, it's just an unfortunate situation where if there are people who are have more power over you and more important or who are more important than you in a project like that then they're going to be the ones who make those final decisions and no matter how much time you put into something how much you care about something sometimes it just won't work out and it's and it's heartbreaking and it's frustrating and then you have this is the part that that, that hit me in the heart a little bit um, which is a part where, which is a part where, um, at the end, the scriptwriter tells the producer, "Would you? I, I have, I still have some form of honor. Would you mind at least taking my name off the project? Because I'm okay with her rewriting the script and you guys bringing something out completely, but, but I don't want my name attached to it if that's going to be the case." Um, and the producer said. I would love to really, could you please do me a, a favor to just leave your name on it because we already printed the merchandise and the posters and everything and your name is already on it. And it'll be, and so the producer's thinking from his side that I have to make more expenses now out of nowhere. And at the same time, the writer is just like, now I have to deal with this, now I have to get credit for a script I didn't write and he has enough pride to admit that, that he doesn't want that. So very very detailed uh not very detailed but very well executed uh executed portrayal of of, situ of a situation like this which does occur i'm assuming more than more than a lot of times in either theater or in movie adaptations and uh and that's why as a writer or as a creator, sometimes these things can get sensitive because ni none, neither of them are right or wrong. The creator of the series is not wrong for for telling the writer, hey, your work wasn't worth my time. You, you didn't get my project because she's allowed to be protective about from uh, she's allowed to be protective of her creation. And. And uh, and uh, what you may call it, and the scriptwriter is allowed to feel hurt that he was basically told that his work wasn't worth anything as well. But it doesn't it doesn't give the it doesn't make the it doesn't make it right that the author acted that way, but it doesn't make it wrong. Like she's allowed to feel that way, and same with the writer. The writer's allowed to feel hurt about it and feel like his work was worth something. But at the same time, he shouldn't also. He also needed. He needs to accept that it probably wasn't correct, or maybe he did misinterpret something. So I love this this two sides of a coin kind of uh, scenario from each side. There was no one was right or wrong. It's just that it's just an, an inconvenience that communication wasn't done properly, and 
unfortunately it came at a very late stage of this production already so but to, re to just say it one more time if you were looking for like an aqua ruby episode it was not one of them it was a little bit on the slower pace i will say that i felt like it went by quickly but i do understand that this was a little bit um on the slower pace for those that didn't care for this kind of thing but then again if you don't care about the entertainment industry and you're watching Oshino Ko, then i get it you're probably watching it for the pairings but no it's like you're watching this because you care a little bit about all of this that being said thank you for watching my name is caesar plays uh, please subscribe like the like uh, the video comment down below what was your favorite part of this or or if you learned something about the writing the script writing process of theater uh, or adaptations of a of an already existing ip um, but yeah otherwise i'm curious to read what you guys say please no spoilers for the manga as i've said before uh, in the comment section i uh, hope to see you guys next week and have a wonderful day or night and goodbye.